Good morning. Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There are a few announcements. Father Dan's next talk will be this Monday at 6.30 p.m. at St. John Church. He will speak on the stained glass windows of Connellsville and Dunbar. Yawk Catholic young adults will have a covered dish BYOB gathering this Thursday at St. Aloysius starting at 6.30 p.m. This group is open to anyone aged 21 through 40. In a special way, we remember the soul of William Zecca at today's Mass. Our gathering hymn for today's Mass is How Great Thou Art, which can be found in your worship aid. How Great Thou Art, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, 
only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation and nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalashah, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our of all look hopefully to you and you give them their food in due season you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing the hand of the To all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth, the hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them, and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. The story of the multiplication of the loaves has been dramatized in many different places. And because it doesn't give us a lot of details about how Jesus does this miracle, I've seen it portrayed in a number of ways. You know, Jesus has the five loaves and the two fish 
and he says the blessing, and the camera pans, and all of a sudden there's all this food everywhere, and it looks like Thanksgiving. It could have happened that way. We don't know. Or it could be that I've seen it where the disciples go, and they are taking the meager amount of food out to people, and they say, I'm sorry, it's not very much. And the people say, what are you talking about? There's food everywhere. And it just sort of becomes revealed over time. And I don't know how it happened, but the more I understand and see how God acts in salvation history in other moments of the Scriptures, the more I become convinced that this is how it happened. Jesus tells the disciples, okay, give them some food, and the disciples sort of think, are you kidding me? Jesus takes what they have, the five loaves, the two fish, and he distributes them to the disciples, and you get a little bit in your little wicker basket. And he says, now go feed them. So imagine you're one of those disciples. You maybe feel a little embarrassed, a little frustrated, a little confused. You walk out there, and there's this mass of people. And the first one you come to, you reach in, and you pull out what's there, and you hand it to that person, and of course, immediately, everyone else will come clamoring, oh, you have something to eat. And now there's all these hands reaching out, and you're thinking in your mind, I don't have enough. So you reach in again, and there's more food. And you give it to the next hand. And you reach in again, and there's still something there. And every time you reach in, there's more. The reason I think it happened that way is because if you remember the story of the Israelites traveling through the desert, and they complained that they had nothing to eat, and they were going to starve to death in the desert. And what happens? God sends them manna every morning. So every morning they would wake up and wonder to themselves, when I walk out of this tent, will there be food? Will God provide food today just as he did yesterday and just as he did the day before that? And you step out and there it is. More food for the day. And for no longer, of course, because the manna went bad after every day. They had to depend that God was going to give them what they needed each and every day. So too, when Elijah, and we heard about Elijah this morning in the first reading, but I'm thinking about the episode where he goes and visits the widow and her son, and he says, give me something to eat, and she says, well, there's only a little bit of flour left and a little bit of oil in the jar, and once we've eaten that, there's a famine going on, and that's it. We have nothing else to eat. We will surely die. But Elijah stays with them for a year, and we're told that every day they had enough food to eat for the whole year, that the flour never went empty and the oil never ran dry. So I have to imagine that every morning they scraped the bottom of the barrel for whatever they could get to measure out and make up whatever they could eat that day, trusting that the next day they would reach in and there would be just enough again. And so it seems this is how God tends to operate. He doesn't give us a stockpile of supplies to say, go and do what I want you to do, do what I'm asking you to do. He seems to give us what we need when we need it, and often not a moment sooner. My brothers and sisters, Doing the will of God sometimes feels like an impossible task because he asks pretty big things of us, things we don't always expect to have to deal with in our lives. Sometimes it's caring for a spouse or for a parent or for a child who's sick, and you don't know how long it will be. It might be months. 
someone has cancer and they have a certain number of treatments and you think, how are we going to get through this? Or there are people who are suffering through some sort of anxiety or frustration, people who suffer from addiction to drugs or to alcohol, or even just some sort of slavery to sin. And we look and we say, okay, this is where I need to get to, to be better, to be myself again, to be made whole. But it looks like an insurmountable mountain is in front of us. And when we look down in our wicker basket, we say, I don't have enough to do this. I don't have enough food for the journey. How can I ever scale this mountain? How will I ever get there? It seems impossible. But when we do the will of God, when we are called by God to do something, no matter how difficult it might be, God will give us what we need. This is why I believe, my brothers and sisters, that when we pray the Our Father, immediately after we say that passage, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Help me to do your will in all things, God. Immediately after that, what do we say? Give us this day our daily bread. Because to do the will of God day after day after day We can't do it on our own. We can't stockpile enough supplies, enough energy, enough strength to know that we can ascend that mountain, to know that we can reach our destination. Because we get started, and what happens? We take a wrong turn. We set our cross aside for a time. It feels too heavy. And sometimes we even take a few steps backward along the way, don't we? And when we look in our wicker basket, if we think we have enough for the journey, then we get to a point and say, well, now I can't make it. Might as well go home. Might as well give up. It's too hard, God. I can't do it. But if it is of God, if it is his will for us, then even when it seems like there's not enough in our wicker basket, we have to trust that day after day after day, meal after meal, and sometimes moment after moment, step by step, we will find what we need in our basket. God will place it there. Think of the times that you've had to do something incredibly difficult and you didn't think you had the strength to do it, and often, seemingly out of nowhere, the right person comes along at the right time to say the right thing or to do something for us that we didn't expect. That's our daily bread. That's our daily bread. That is God giving us what we need when we need it. It is him putting something in our basket when we least expected it to help us continue on the journey, on the path, up the mountain, to do what he is asking us to do. When we ask God day after day, give us this day our daily bread, we are asking him to give us what we need. And that makes us uncomfortable, if we're honest, because we like to be in control. We like to have the security of knowing what will happen tomorrow and the next day and the next week and the next month. But when we become self-reliant and then something happens that we're not prepared for, that's when we're called to have faith to trust that even if our resources are gone and there seems like there's nothing more left, God will put what we need there. 
out of love for us, when we do what he asks, he will supply what we ourselves are lacking. That's a God of faith, a God we can believe in, who calls us to trust in him. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we gather this day at this Eucharistic table, we ask God to give us what we need. And consider just how much is contained in that little tiny wafer. It contains the fullness of God, all the strength and the courage and the wisdom and the might of God himself. He gives us that bread so that when we go out of this church to go and do what he is asking us to do, no matter how hard it is, we will have what we need because God is with us. May we be encouraged by that. May we be reminded just how much God gives us every Sunday, every day if you come to daily Mass. He gives us our daily bread when we need it. Not always when we'd like it, but when we need it. And if we do that day after day, we walk up that mountain, and one day we'll look back and say, I had enough, thanks to God. And as they say in the gospel, there will be some left over, and all will eat and be satisfied. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's providential care for each and every one of us, we lift our hearts to him now and ask him to answer our prayers. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the body of Christ, here on earth, that we may be nourished in body and spirit and renewed in our mission to serve the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who fight against famine, that their work of relief and research may lead to an end to hunger in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For grandparents and the elderly on this first World Day of Honor, that as they continue to age, they may be blessed with good health, respect, and happiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all who eat of the one bread of the Eucharist may live in a manner worthy of the baptism and call we have received to be disciples of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in special need of our prayers today, the poor, the sick, the addicted, and especially those individuals on our Catholic community prayer list, that they might have their burdens lifted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that they may come to the eternal feast in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. This morning we celebrate uh, Day, a special day for grandparents and the elderly. Pope Francis declared this day back in January, the fourth Sunday of July, because it coincides with the feast day of Saints Joachim and Anne, who are the grandparents of Jesus. And so at this time, we're going to offer a special blessing for all of our grandparents and all of our elderly in our community in thanksgiving for all that they've done for us and for continued prayers for them for health and well being. Lord Jesus, you were born of the Virgin Mary, the daughter of Saints Joachim and Anne. Look with love on grandparents and elderly the world over. Protect them. They are a source of enrichment for families, for the church, and for all of society. Support them as they grow older. May they continue to be for their families strong pillars of gospel faith, guardians of noble domestic ideals, living treasuries of sound religious traditions. Make them teachers of wisdom and courage, that they may pass on to future generations the fruits of their mature human and spiritual experience. Lord Jesus, help families and society to value the presence and role of grandparents and our elderly. May they never be ignored or excluded, but always encounter respect and love. Help them to live serenely and to feel welcomed in all the years of life which you give them. Mary, Mother of all the living, keep grandparents and the elderly constantly in your care. Accompany them on their earthly pilgrimage, and by your prayers grant that all families may one day be reunited in our heavenly homeland, where you await all humanity for the great embrace of life without end. And may Almighty God bless all our grandparents and elderly in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Almighty Father, since we cannot all receive the sacrament of communion together at this time, we ask you to help us to see and express the communion of our church and to unite our hearts with the heart of Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us now express our desire to receive the Eucharist by praying the following prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join me in singing our communion hymn, I Am the Bread of Life, which can be found in your worship aid. And 
and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. I am the resurrection. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Yes, Lord, we believe that you. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Please join me in singing our recessional hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing, which can be found in your worship aid. Sent forth by God. 